it's great to see when you when you've got a club that can you know, basically still grind out a result when they've not been the best performance. Uh, Sami Yoa, Nicolas Sami Yoa. I don't, I don't. I, I'm so sorry. I do apologise. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Any revs UK, all things revolution from a UK perspective. Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 9 of Any Revs UK, all things doing the revolution from a UK perspective. Hopefully you guys have had a nice weekend and kind of pumped for the uh, Louisville game. Obviously we're in you know, the, the cup action now, it's uh, time maybe for Brad Friedel to change the team around and we'll get into that a little bit later on today. We're also obviously looking back at the game against the New York Red Bulls, talking about my thoughts and obviously how I uh, had a new attacking line of, of Brad Friedel uh, played out in that game. And obviously any other news coming out of the camera. So looking forward to that game, as I mentioned, against Louisville. Uh, predictions on the game, lineup, and scores. So obviously, you know, we played actually two, two games. I think it was the other, Atlanta and New York. Obviously Atlanta it was quite a while ago now. Uh, I can't really remember much. I know it was 1-1. <laughs> that, that, was, that was pretty much as much going to get it out of me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite, you know, we, we were kind of looking at the revs going on the road and, you know, not picking up a lot from these matches, you know, we had three kind of games squished quite tightly together against Vancouver, Atlanta and uh, and, and New York, you know, two, two home games and one on, the, one on the road. But, you know, Atlanta flying high, we, wasn't many people probably out there expecting us to get much from that one. And to be fair, you know, it wasn't the best game of football in the world. Uh, but, you know, we still managed to somehow come away with a point, which I think, you know, I think I mentioned this before, but it's, it's, it's great to see when, you, when you've got a club that can and basically still grind out a result when they've not put in the best performance. Uh, I think that's testament to, to the guys there. As I said, it wasn't a standout performance. You know, memory's not that great too fair, so I can't remember too much. I haven't written any notes down on it, so not the best for me. But I'm kind of, as I mentioned, I was kind of talking about the, the game against the, the Red Bulls, really. That's what I've come to talk about today. Obviously, 2-1. 2-1 victory as well. Um, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, it was quite a, quite a late kickoff. I managed to kind of stay up for most of the game. to kind of, kind of miss the... Kind of tail end of of the match, but I did catch up uh, n the next morning because obviously most of these games kind of kick off around half past midnight UK time here, so it's quite tricky sometimes to, to watch the games live. But I've caught up now, so um, a lot, lot to take away from this game. So obviously straight away with the lineup of Brad Light, um, obviously a lot to take away from this one. First of all, obviously Brad Friedel's lineup. It kind of surprised a lot of people, I think. There's a lot of talk about what's going to happen now. Obviously, Chris Tierney picking up that ACL injury and obviously now out for the, for the season. Obviously, my thoughts obviously going to, to Chris and hopefully for a speedy recovery with him. Uh, obviously, you know, dev devastating news to, to all Revolution fans. You know, he's been a great servant for the club. Hopefully, this isn't the end for Chris Tierney. And if he, if he doesn't come back as a, in some kind of playing capacity, I think he's got to come back in some kind of capacity uh, in the Revolution ranks. I mean, obviously, we've just seen CD9 obviously getting an ambassador role, maybe that's something that Timothy could do or, you know, I think he'd be probably more best suited to push something around the, the coaching, especially in the kind of academy ranks, I think that would be ideal for him. Uh, but obviously at the end of the day, I do want to see him uh, put on his boots again, uh, come out of this injury stronger and hopefully get back into the revolution starting 11. Um, a lot of talk with obviously what's going to happen with right back, reports coming out of the revolution camp that, that Somi wasn't, you know, fully fit, was he fit enough to play? Uh, obviously we kind of found out quite close to kick off that, that Somi wasn't fully fit to, to play, let alone even make the, the, the bench. Um, so it's up to Claude Diana to, to step in at left back and uh, I'm not 100% sure, I've, I've looked and I can't see a time uh, there might have been that, that Diana's actually played left back for Revolution. I'm not too sure if it was his first attempt at playing left back or, or not, um, but from, from my shoddy research I couldn't find one. And um, for me, I think, you know, he, he did well. He, he got involved going forward. Obviously, he knew kind of when to get back from, from that kind of, he's more, definitely more defensive minded than obviously so, so me is. Uh, but you know, he took a lot of set pieces for, for the revolution. Uh, you know, he's got a great left foot on him, um, free kicks, corners, everything. I think that was a really good asset to the team. Obviously, the fact that he wasn't stuck in a defensive role, I think actually suited him quite well. Uh, and it might possibly be the answer going forward uh, for revolution. But obviously, there is other options. I mentioned obviously maybe looking to promote somebody from the academy or obviously are we going to start delving into the transfer window once that opens again shortly. Um, 
you know, there is a few people that are obviously out there on the free transfer list that the revolution might be looking at and, and, and you know as an option so I think, um, obviously there's, there's i mean you know there is there is options there but i'm not sure what the right one is at the moment i think with the fact that the owner played quite well um and you know we've got annie barbar who's uh you know been a, a great asset to us this season along with dela Maya. and about dela Maya obviously picking up another yellow card which is slightly concerning uh, luckily, obviously, it wasn't Diana. So I think Diana would have missed the next match if it had been in for I believe he's on. Uh, he's only one away now from from a suspension. Um, but yeah, there's definitely an option there. But then that also does leave us slightly short in the centre back role. If if one of them pick up, then who do we play at left back if Somi's not back fully fit? And at the moment, the question obviously hanging over Somi's head is, you know, is 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 he actually a left back? Because he definitely looks more like a, a left wing back if anything, not a very defensive minded wing back. He gets caught out of position far too much. You didn't see Diana getting caught out of position, you know, out of position that much during the game. Uh, he kind of knew what his defensive role was. He did join in the attack when he could, and he was effective as well. So I think it was a very, very solid performance from him. Obviously, other kind of things to note from from the the team selection. Obviously, the you know inclusion of uh, Nemeth and Rowe as well, uh, players that we didn't kind of expect to maybe do uh, see starting in the starting eleven as such, especially with obviously the form. Of, of you know the likes of uh, Zahibo, you know, and Bra- even like maybe you can put Brandon Byand and Coldwell in there as well. Uh, you know, it was quite quite surprising to see they were starting in the game, but you know both of them put in solid performances. Nemeth was finding a lot of space down the right hand side. You know, he attacked down both both flanks really. Obviously, Panier was dangerous as ever, obviously getting an assist, but also Nemeth as well, grabbing grabbing an assist. Um, yeah, it was really good to see. The fact that we were attacking about down both sides, both with you know great athleticism and um, both looking to get forward when, when they could, and really troubled the defences, running at the defences at pace. I mean, at, at times Nimeth had almost too much space on that right hand side. It was almost like you know, when players sometimes I think have a little bit too much space, they do kind of almost get caught in two minds what to do with the ball. You can't, you can't almost have too much time on the ball sometimes. Whereas if you kind of you know having a little bit. You know, time on the ball but then having to, to make a pass because you've got a, a player coming in with a, the tackle. I think that sometimes actually brings out the best in players. Um, you know, we crossed a lot of balls into the box. Bunbury's getting a lot better at getting in positions. Obviously, we've seen that with the second goal as well. Um, it's almost like now that, you know, Pania just almost knows where Teal's going to be because that was almost like pinpointed. It just evaded all the defenders and just pulled it back just right in the right place at the right time for, for Teal Bunbury. He didn't have to break stride or anything. It was really, really well work goal all round and you know same with when MF, him and Dungas combined really well together it, it almost been like they've, they've been playing together for the whole season so far they, they seem to know where each other is going to be um, I'm, I'm not too sure if they've been working on, on in training together if they kind of knew that this, this was coming if this was what Brad's plan was all along and they've been working hard in training for the last few weeks maybe um, with, with Nemeth, Pania and Dungas up, up top with, with, with Bunbury uh, but it did seem like that kind of front four had been uh, gelled really, really well and had been playing for a while. As I mentioned, Callum Rowe as well coming in in a slightly deeper role, playing alongside uh, Casado, who had an absolutely stunning match for, for me. Um, possibly, uh, actually, no, to fair, I did actually give him a man of the match. Uh, really, really solid performance. I kind of was a bit worried when I first in the lineup, you know, taking Zahiba out for me has been pivotal in a lot of kind of play with, with Revolution, a lot of, you know, breaking up the play and starting the play again. He's been a key player for me, but you know, I think Casido's come in there and just proven uh, me wrong, if, if anything. I was one who said a few episodes ago that I didn't think he was the right player to, to come in if, you know, Zahibo had an injury. I but he, he basically proved me wrong right there because he did what Zahibo does and possibly better, uh, some, some might argue. Um, but yeah, really, really solid performance from him. Um, the team all around really played really well, really, really well. I don't think it was a, you know, a, a bad performance. Tilburn was showing again. That, you know, a lot of people doubted him at the start of the season, me included. Um, but was he going to be this prolific goal scorer? Is he a threat? You know, we were saying yes, he's worked right there, but you know, he's not finishing the ball. He's, he's now got eight goals. You know, he's up there with, with the elite of, of the MLS top goal scorers at the moment. I think he's sitting fourth. Uh, no, uh, sixth. Sorry, sixth at the moment. Um, so it's going to be really hard for, for you know for Agadella to to come in now and, and regain that shirt. So I mean. Some might have said that it would have been his at the start of the season. Obviously, that's not how Brad's seen it. Um, and he's, he's given Teal the opportunity, and Teal's you know, grabbed it with both hands, and it's now it's going to be really hard for, for Ragadella to get back into the match, uh, to, into the team, sorry. Uh, Turner, 
again, just pulling off some ridiculous saves. He's got to be, you know, I mean, unfortunately for him, there is some top quality goalkeepers in MLS at the moment. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be in, the least in the conversation for the MLS, MLS All-Stars team. He's, he's got to be in the conversation and thoughts at least um, because he's had an absolute stunning season, a rise out of nowhere, really. You know, Brad's obviously seen something in him and he's, 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 he's as I mentioned about Teal grasping with his opportunity, Matt Turner has, has done the interesting, if not better uh, than that. He's just, he's just been a revelation in, in a, you know, hats off to, to, to Brad because players, you know, people probably didn't see that. They weren't, they weren't going to see that coming. It wasn't, it wasn't, everyone kind of thought, you know, it's going to be Connor Cody. It's, it's, you know, that's the out and out number one pick. Uh, obviously, you know, he, unfortunately, is, well, he, was, he was on the bench. He was on the bench, which was, just pleasing to see for this match, um, but yeah, everyone kind of almost had him nailed on starting in goal, and Turner's obviously came along and and said no, and obviously impressed uh, Brad in pre-season, and now got the the shirt rightfully so, and is, is I don't think everyone gives it up. I think that's it now. I think, I think Matt Turner is in a number one and rightfully so. Um, looking at this, obviously the statistics in the game. Um, it was a fairly even game to be fair. Um, I think on the balance of things we did, we've got a slightly stronger team. Uh, not at all times, obviously a very sluggish start and obviously conceding, uh, well, who, <laughs> who'd have guessed it, a Bradley White Phillips header. Um, I, I would say, you know, the only one really at fault for that one was Andrew Farrell. Um, I don't think Diana would have, I, I can't really class him as his fault. Obviously the ball did come in for the left hand side, but he was closing his man down, you know, it wasn't like he wasn't doing his job. but. Andrew Farrell just, yeah, just for, for me, just didn't track his, his, his man as, as well as he should do. He didn't put him under enough pressure. And it's quite an easy header at the end of the day for, for somebody so good in the air as well. So, and them kind of, you know, must have seen reams and reams of tape of, of Bradley White Phillips doing pretty much exactly the same thing week in, week out in the MLS. So it wasn't like it was untoward or we didn't, didn't know it was going to happen. It's what happens all the time. The ball comes in from the, the end. He kind of drops off and cuts back inside. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of... The only one I could probably blame for that one is, is Andrew Farrell. Uh, but other than that, you know, again, he, he performed really, really well. Um, didn't really put too much wrong. I'm still unto, still a bit unsure of that one. I would like to see, obviously, Brandon Bay given an opportunity, another opportunity. Uh, but obviously, I'm not too sure what Brad's thoughts are, obviously, on that one. If, you know, he's not really done too much wrong so, at the moment. So it's kind of a bit uncalled for, you know, dropping from, from the team. Um, one thing I would note is that the, the pass accuracy of the team wasn't wasn't the best in this match. It wasn't the best for for New York either. And I think New York played bad as well. Um, you know, we, we put them under a lot of pressure, dealt with a lot of situations really, really well. Um, I think you know that again their pass succession was really, really low. I think they was in the 56. I think we was in the 60, 62 percentile. Um, they still had nine shots for us on target to our 10 and six. So it was a close game. Um, I think we edged out slightly on the possession as well, but the, yeah, it wasn't the best passing game of football. Um, there was a, kind of a lot of kind of more, more direct football, I would have said, than anything. It was at some points almost basketball-esque. It was like kind of attack after attack, one team attack, another team attack, um, and it was almost at times you know the defence that was was keeping both teams in, in in the game as the you know the attacker kind of looked to, to break them down. So I think both you know, both defensive teams units did, did really really well. Um, I think our, obviously what Brad did in this one is obviously made us more attack and more attacking threat. With you know, Casido isn't as defensive minded as the Hevo. Canaro definitely isn't as defensive minded as Casido or Scott Caldwell. Um, you know, had Nemeth and Pania uh, on on the wings with uh, Diego. He loves to just kind of almost have a free roll at some time, some points. Um, but yeah, it was almost like we've kind of played with four defenders and Casido every now and again. So it was definitely more attack minded. Lineup that he, he kind of named and it did obviously work. It worked really, really well. Um, you know, I think both halves we would have won the game. It was kind of not no, definitely not an easy win. So it's never an easy win against against uh, either of the New York teams. But uh, it was, you know, we, we got the job done. And I think this one has to be handed to to, to Brad really because um, he's kind of tactical. I wouldn't say change it. The philosophy was pretty much the same. But obviously the change in personnel and kind of almost what they bring to the team is kind of almost what won it for that one for, for me. Um, yeah, kind of the only thing I would say that was 
I mean, it's good to obviously see uh, Wagadello come on the pitch again, but to obviously just see, give um, Zachary Harrow, um, it was just, I, I'm not sure, it was just to run down the clock, I'm presuming, but to bring him on at like the 91st minute, I think it almost was, um, I'm just not understanding that substitution for me. Um, I mean, I, can, I suppose I get it, it's wasting minutes on the clock, but I just, it must be quite, I, I imagine if I was a, a football player and the manager told me to you know, get ready and you, you're coming on, it, it, yeah, it should be. It's slightly annoying coming on for one minute. Um, so I'd like to see him come on a little bit earlier, you know, kind of thinking we had the kind of game under, not under control as, as you know, as such, but, you know, I think the game was as uh, uh, maybe it still came on at the same similar time, you know. I think Agadella came on just before the 80th minute, uh, Zihibo just after. So if, if, if uh, Zachary came on about that time as well, uh, we might have been able to see him do a little bit more with the, the ball. Because I definitely would like to see a little bit more from him this season. Talking about a little bit more from kind of fringe players, um, we'll then move on to obviously we've got a, a cup game against uh, Louisville. Um, now obviously I'm not going to kind of lie, I don't really know much about um, Louisville at, at all. I'm not going to pretend I do. Um, but you know, I don't think it's going to be as, as easy a game as what people possibly are thinking um, for for the Revolution. And also, well, obviously, I'm still really unsure about, I mean, obviously from what Brad said in his pre-match um, talk, I think he's going to name a strong, strongest side. I think he's going to, you know, he's taken the cup seriously, he wants to win it. Uh, one thing I do know is that they're in, in Group A of the, um, uh, I can't, oh my God, what's it even called? This is really bad. Is it U, UCL? UL, UCL? UCL? It's UCL. Uh, they are sitting second as well. Uh, they have got, I think they've got two games actually in hand over Cincinnati um, and my other kind of... There's quite a few teams. I quite like a few of the teams in the league. I like the obviously the Tampa Bay Rowdies, Indy 11, uh, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Riverhound as well, Charlotte Independent. There's some really, really good teams actually. Um, obviously, Drogba's, um, Phoenix Rising as well, Orange County. It's quite these last teams that I kind of really like the look of. And obviously, uh, Las Vegas Lights as well are in there. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I've mentioned promotion and relegation before in an episode Touch and Lightly. I think it's definitely one for me to kind of go on a 40-odd minute rant at some point throughout the season um, when we've got nothing to talk about. But at the moment, I'll say it for another day because that's my opinion and I know it will ruffle a few feathers. Uh, but yeah, they're doing really, really well in the um, in, in the league, obviously, as I said, sitting second just behind Cincinnati. I think they've got some games in hand off that one. Obviously, they've been in the cup for a little bit longer than, than, than we have now. I think they've I think they picked up a, a 5 0 win in their last time round. Um, I think that was I think that was what they did. It, yeah, I think it's five. No, 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 they played one this season, didn't they? They won five 0 in this second round, and then they won um, one in the last one against uh, Saint Louis FC as well. And since then, they've had a league match against Cincinnati, which they did actually win two 0 So they're actually, you know, they've not lost a game in a while. They're on sort of good run of form. It's probably not the best time for, for Revolution to play play them. Obviously, especially cooking me off the back, obviously, of a, of a, a, you know, a quite exhausting game, I can imagine, against um, uh, New York. You know, there's a lot of energy being wasted there. That's why I do think there's going to be some slight alterations for the team. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be... I did, I did post a tweet out earlier, if you don't follow me on, over on Twitter, it's at anybevsvk, uh, about the kind of starting line potentially I thought that Brad could name. Uh, and a lot of people reacted to it saying, you know, I don't think it's going to be as heavy low rotated as it as it as it kind of you know as it kind of alluded to in that press conference, uh, the post game press conference. Um, but I'm not too sure. You know, he's got a lot of games. You know, he's played, the the team has played a lot of games. I think it, I think Panier is definitely going to be one of the rested. I'm not too sure about Zahibo now because obviously rested Zahibo. Does that mean that he was saving Zahibo for this game? So he wanted Zahibo to to you know. Yeah, I think we will see. Kind of, I think Turner won't start. I think it will be Cody in goal uh, for this one. Um, if Shami's fully fit, I think he'll come back in at left back. Hopefully, looking to see Brandon Byer playing uh, potentially right back, uh, and then a, a, maybe a defensive partnership of Annie Barbar and I don't know how to pronounce his name. What's the um, what's the other name? The one that we've not seen. I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Uh, I probably should know his name. Um, it's, uh, it's I'm going to try try it. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually terrible with names. It's going to be absolutely awful. Uh, Sammy Yoa. Nicolas Samioa? I don't, I don't, I, I'm so sorry, I do apologise. Uh, hopefully we'll see him uh, and the team sheet, if not, definitely on the bench and possibly looking to, to make his first start. 
for the revolution. Uh, then obviously, you know, I think in the kind of midfield, um, so I think, you know, we'll have Somi there, and we'll have Andy Barber there, kind of first team regulars, uh, Cody in goal, um, Nicolas and uh, possibly Brandon Boy playing it right back. Then in terms of midfield, I think we will see, see the Hebo and possibly then uh, Scotty Caldwell um, playing in that kind of, you know, that's that kind of, not, I wouldn't say our first choice, I think our first choice now is possibly Casido and the Hebo when we're playing on two midfielders. I think we possibly will play them too. Um, you know, that is quite so it's defensive minded, as some might say. Uh, but you know, Caldwell does. You know, he's a more box to box midfielder for me. He does get forward and back as, as, as much. You know, he's not defensive minded. So obviously, um, then kind of in front of that, I think we will play the three and then the one up front. Kind of hoping that it will be Brandon. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> it will be Brian Wright up top, uh, possibly supported by uh, Femi. Oh, I'm not too sure about that one. Sure about if Femi will start, but we could see Roe pushed forward there, or maybe even By pushed forward, and uh, Andrew Farrell playing right back. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure. Femi possibly on the right, and then if on the left with um, uh, Harrow supporting Brian White up top. I think that's quite heavily rotated, so I think there is a good chance that we might even see Agadello on the right hand side, um, then Zachary Harrow, Nemeth, yeah, and Brian Wright. So. Let's start again. Cody, because everyone's getting really confused now. I'm going for uh, Cody in goal, right back of Brandon by in uh, in defensive central partnership. I'm going for Nicolas and Ali Baba. Left back Somi if fully fit. Even not, then I don't know what we'll do. Um, possibly Row there. Who knows? Then um, possibly we're going to go for Zahibo and Coldwell or Row there. Agadello on the right. Uh, Zachary Haravo in attacking centre midfield as the number 10. On the left hand side, Nemeth, and up top, Brian Wright. And then I think we'll have a, a bench full of, uh, you know, possibly from Dunges. Tanir will be on the bench. I think Bumpy will be given the night off completely. Um, then maybe Rowe if he's not on the pitch or Caldwell. Then we'll possibly see Andrew Farrell and Delamaya. And then possibly Knight on the bench. I don't think I think Turner and Bunbury will completely be given the night off if I'm if I'm being completely honest. There may be Diana as well. Um, in terms of predictions for the match, I honestly don't know. Uh, it obviously completely depends on the formation, not the formation. Not really, well, yeah, the formation is definitely is key. But the, the starting eleven names, as I said in the post match conference, he did kind of almost say that you know he's he, well he's taking the cup seriously. So he may even name a full strength team, but I think it's an opportunity for to give a few of fringe players the opportunity to kind of get out there, get some minutes underneath their belt, and uh, really show us kind of what they can do. And really, but he's still, I think he's still going to definitely name an eleven, which he 100% believes is going to get there, get the job done, and, and get the job done easily. Hope so. But as I said, they're in a you know a rich run of form at the moment. They're not uh, you know a team to kind of be underestimated. They're sitting you know well second in their in a league with, with games in hand and they've just been the team in, above them uh, you know, they're coming off with some really good results one against Atlanta the United second team um, they're there for a reason so only time will tell what will happen with that one anyway guys I've rambled for, for far too long in your ear holes as, as always pretty much uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this one if you have then obviously don't forget to share support by dropping likes favourites all that kind of good stuff as I mentioned don't forget to follow me over on social media like Twitter at UK. And I hope you have a nice weekend.